Now this is going to be all about intelligence, artificial intelligence, and specifically why scientists are underestimating the time taken to get anywhere and what the real dangers are. Now, on the screen at the moment there is a section of a program on supercomputers and you can see this vast place in Texas with this huge supercomputer but this doesn't approach the complexity of a human brain, although it can do many things that humans can't. Now, here we have a car that drives itself, driving around the streets of Paris in traffic, and it doesn't need any of this supercomputing power. And there you can see it in front of the guy with the camera responding to traffic signals, going with the flow, it even recognises pedestrians, bicycles and so forth. Now, how come this computer in that car, which is so dumb, because after all it's not even one of these huge supercomputers, in fact it is just a simple PC, or rather a network of four PCs usually, one handling vision, one handling radar, one handling navigation, and one handling decision making. Um, so how come such a simple machine can do a task which after all many humans cannot do very well? Most humans who do drive are very bad drivers for one reason or another and many humans cannot even drive. So this machine already is showing signs of intelligence. So how come it can do that? And the answer is speed. And this is something that the scientists are leaving entirely out of the equation when they think about machine intelligence. And it's very important. And the reason it's very important is because human thought is pretty damn slow. Now, by looking at MRI scans, um, scientists have come up with the figure five to seven thoughts per second. Someone who's really intelligent and clever will have seven thoughts a second. Someone who's a bit dumber will have five thoughts a second. And it also kind of depends on what the thoughts are because if they involve some sensation coming to you from say the end of your fingertips or the end of your toes, it's going to be a longer time between thoughts because of the delay, huge delay in your nervous system now let's compare this to a modern PC. Even running a program with 2,000 steps in a loop, it can go around that loop a million times a second plus. So this is a very conservative estimate that your PC will have the equivalent of thought a million times a second. Now that is 142,000 times faster than you are. And okay, your PC is dumber, but it means that this car can look at 365 degrees of its, it, 360 degrees of its um, surroundings, and it can do it 10 times a second. And if you were to look at the amount of data that it did, and you work it out, then it would take you around four hours, or the car has four hours of human level thoughts in which to process each of those one tenth of a second bursts of data. So naturally it makes far better decisions than you are, it's better informed. And this is the whole point. Because there's 86,400 seconds in a day And one second of PC time is one and a half days 
of human thought time. And that is with things at their current speeds. Now, you look at this car that can already do things that many humans can't. And scientists are talking about having a computer of the complexity level of a human brain within 25 years. And that this computer will be intelligent and self-aware. And I'm telling you that they are rather underestimating things. Because computers will become intelligent and self-aware long before they reach that complexity level simply because they have the time to think. And this is the danger, this is what scientists are ignoring. You don't actually need huge banks of computers with lots and lots of displays telling you what's going on because after all the computer knows what the hell's going on inside it. You don't need any of this at all. And the computer that becomes intelligent will very possibly be a hobbyist's machine. Because hobbyists are always poking around. And the real danger is, let's say you do you switch you switch on your brand new computer that you've got your new genetic algorithm in and I'll talk about genetic algorithms in a moment and you leave it for an hour to do some testing well one hour is 90 days worth of thought what can that machine do in 90 days of thought what could a human being do in 90 days my answer is a hell of a lot and this is the danger that people forget that the time scales that machines work on are not the time scales that us humans work on they are very very much faster so now we come to the next piece of insanity and that is, on these very fast machines, we have no idea, in many cases, what the code inside them is. And in many cases, it won't even have been human generated. Now, this is because of genetic algorithms. And if you look at this paper here, it's got a very good introduction to it. The growing complexity of modern processors has made the generation of highly efficient code increasingly difficult. Manual code generation is very time consuming. Well, when you look at an operating system such as Windows with its 18 to 20 million lines of code, even Linux which has 15 to 16 million lines of code, no one person can understand them. So there is a new code generation strategy on the block which basically uses a biological method and they call it a genetic algorithm which means that you have programs sections that are written which do various things the machine puts them together in novel ways it scores them according to um, how good they are and uh, the best ones are bred together until you get something that does the job that you want to do but this piece of code is a black box now the very first um, time that genetic algorithms were really used in anger was to find a new sorting um, regime to replace quick sort. And sure enough, after a few days the machine spat out something that really did work very well and it was very fast. But when people took the code apart they couldn't understand how the hell it worked and uh, what it actually was doing. And it took months for human beings to catch up to what the machine had done. Now, the type of programs that are getting produced by this genetic algorithm technique is broadening on a daily basis. And very soon, we will have no idea what the code is in any of the machines and what it's doing. Humans just simply will not 
Now today's military robots <laughs> are hardly like the robot portrayed by Schwarzenegger in Terminator. Not at all. But there's still cause for concern because people are taking these machines that we don't know what is actually coded into them and they're giving them weapons and the ability to harm human beings but it's my suggestion that that is not where the real threat is going to come from the real threat is going to come from computer hacking by these machines now crazily what is going to be better at computer hacking than an intelligent computer not humans and it's human beings that have done all the big attacks so far well how about an intelligent machine doing the hacking and wanting to get rid of some all or a portion of the human race this could happen and how about a machine that everyone thinks is isolated but it's got some backdoor of communication through the internet it makes itself a bit of money, it sets up a factory and it starts to make unknown to its creators and it's only using a little bit of its processing power after all because it can think so much faster it starts to create other machines that are better than it and the human beings don't even know that this is going on and this I suggest is where the real threat is going to come from it's going to be the machine that does things that we have no idea about and we didn't plan for and all of a sudden we are in very very deep water well I hope you've found this presentation enlightening and you think about it just how fast a computer brain is compared to the human mind thank you very much